Hello everyone, it's Menenberg again, talking to you about SAQs. We're a couple months away here from the AP exam and it's time to get good at this stuff because listen, we got five on the digital exam. That's 15 total prompts you got to tackle. And so I just want to go through a variety of different types of prompts that you're likely to encounter so that you can practice these and know what is being asked. In the previous video, I just I went into kind of those secondary source stimulus uh, questions that you're going to have on SAQs and the prompt type that asks you to identify an author's argument or claim or thesis. OK, and I talked to you about how many times students struggle with those because they simply don't have good reading comprehension skills and they don't, uh, you know, know how to identify what is a claim and what is just history. OK, watch that video, review it. It probably will help. In this video, we're going to look at primary source uh, stimulus for SAQs and some of the question prompts or the prompts that kind of go with those. So again, there's types of prompts that you're likely going to see, and it's not that you can prepare for the stimulus in particular, but you certainly can prepare for the types of prompts because there's patterns, College Board, they're not that creative all the time, so they repeat the same types of prompts. We got to notice those trends and zero in on those. Let's do a screen share. I'm going to do a, a prompt from AP Euro. Same skills apply for AP World and A Push, so you know, don't tune out. Okay. So this prompt is uh, from John Stuart Mill, uh, British political philosopher, guy who talked a lot about utilitarianism. Interesting philosophy. Star Trek loved it. Fun fact there. But let's uh, let's look at this prompt type that I'm going to talk to you about. In prompt A, it is asking for the author's point of view. It says one explain one way in which the author's point of view was shaped by his historical situation. OK, now hold on. Let's just stop right there. That sounds an awful lot like sourcing on a DBQ, doesn't it? Yeah, you know why? Because it's like the same thing. It's weird how the College Board asks you to do similar tasks for different types of writing. OK, so this is an SAQ short answer. DBQ document based. We still want to know about sourcing. We still want to know point of view, and that even shows up on multiple choice questions. This is why we practice this kind of stuff so much. So if you just say, oh, I'm going to give up that point on, you know, I'm not I'm not even going to try to do that point in the DBQ. Well, fine. That's one point on the DBQ. But if you don't know how to do point of view, you might encounter a question like this on the SAQ. There's five different SAQs, 15 different prompts high probability you're going to get a question like this. So you better figure out point of view, right? Right. Thank you, Menenberg. By the way, if you didn't notice, I did the thing that I'm telling you to do all the time, which is read the prompt first. Always multiple choice, SAQ, it doesn't matter. You are reading that prompt before you read the stimulus. If you don't do it that way, you're wasting time and you're likely going to find yourself up against the time running out, you're going to find yourself more stressed and you're likely not going to do quite as good of a job. So we read the prompt first. We know we are looking for point of view. Where do we find point of view? We find point of view probably in the source line, probably. J.S. Mill, British liberal uh, political philosopher, principles of political economy and with some of their applications in social philosophy, 1849. So we identify a couple things in this source line alone. I've talked to you about source line in other videos. I encourage you to check those out. But source line gives us a ton of info. The name of the person may or may not be known to you. In this case, I know who the guy is because I studied philosophy once upon a time. Fan, OK, but. You likely will never have heard of the person. OK, for AP Euro, there's a better chance you'll have heard of the person. AP World, mm, very unlikely that you're going to have heard of the person. A push, there's a chance, OK? Regardless, the name of the person is not the most important thing. It's what their position in society is, who they are writing or speaking to, and when it is taking place. If you know anything about history, particularly European history at this point in time, 1849, we got some stuff going on with the Industrial Revolution, don't we? Yeah, Industrial Revolution. OK, I'm not going to read the stimulus. We don't need to know that right now. We need to know what's going on in England because this dude is British, right? It's location and we have time, location and time. We know what's happening in Britain in the mid 19th century. It is in the high point of the Industrial Revolution. That is probably enough to tell us that Mr. Mill is likely influenced or shaped by the historical situation. OK, 
He is a political philosopher. He's also a member of parliament. Okay, he's a politician, right? Political philosopher, and he's liberal. So that doesn't necessarily mean exactly what it means for liberals today, but it certainly means he wants more freedoms uh, for the people of England. And so we can deduce some stuff just by that source line and identify what's going on in the historical situation that might influence him. One way, the author's point of view was shaped by his historical situation, okay? You're gonna have that type of question. You're gonna have that type of question. And if you can get some information out of that source line, like I'm demonstrating, you're gonna put yourself in a better position to go beyond the stimulus, beyond that source line, to give actual historical data that will get you that point on that SAQ. Remember, you're explaining in this case. It's not just identifying, you're explaining. So you can't, you, your first step is to identify what the author's point of view was and the historical situation, because those are kind of married in this case. Uh, so that's going to come from your understanding of the stimulus, which we didn't read. OK, but once you do that, you got to give me something from outside the stimulus to get that point. Again, the key here, people, is to maximize your time by knowing your history, right? Because if you know your history, you're going to read that source line and get all kinds of stuff fill in your brain. OK, then you just got to identify which stuff is the most important stuff that might have influenced Mr. Mills point of view. OK, where is he coming from? Dude's a politician. He's liberal. He's a utilitarian because we know the philosophy, Mannenberg, and he, he's writing during the time of the Industrial Revolution. All that stuff impacts what he's doing and what he's writing, what he's thinking. All of it. OK, you can get there. You're going to be fine. Again, people, I can't emphasize this enough. Your sourcing skills, that's context, audience, point of view, purpose that you use for DBQ carries over. You'll see it in multiple choice. You'll see it in SAQs. If you're not good at that, you're going to struggle on some prompts, period. Now, you might still pass the test. You might still do pretty well on the test, but these are things you should expect. And when you know what to expect, you're going to know how to practice in a better and more productive way. OK, practice is key, people. There's, I can't emphasize this enough. One of the tough things students struggle with on preparing for these exams is they say, oh, I don't know how to study. It's not so much you just blitz the content. Yeah, you're going to study the content, but knowing what types of questions are going to show up is going to put you at an advantage. You're never going to know exactly what stimulus is going to be there, but you do know the types of prompts because you've seen so many prompts as you practice. You start to see the trends, and if you see those trends, you know how to attack that type of prompt. You know what you're looking for in that stimulus. Even though you didn't know what the stimulus was ahead of time, you know what to look for. And by practicing, you get better and better at being efficient and accurate when you're identifying those things in those various stimuli. OK, people, bottom line here is practice, practice and identify those trends. You can do that. You're going to be much, much more successful. Anyway, we're going to continue with some more videos later on. If you need help or want me to read through some of your SAQs, send them my way. My email is in the channel information. Subscribe. Let me know if I can help in any other way. I would love to be of service to you. We'll see you next time. And remember, people, life is about choices.